Hey, asshole. You're listening to Raider Radio. This is your man, Red Eye, running Raider Radio. Do you like the name? Well, I don't give a shit. This here is a song I wrote totally by myself without any help at all. A Red Eye original, you could say. Hey there, fella, what you doing out here all alone? Hasn't anybody told you you're better off? to come up to me and say, man, Red Eye, that was so good. Man, I love that. I already know it's good. I don't need your approval. Hey, anybody else getting a little tired of drinking Nuka Cola? I mean, it beats dying of thirst, I guess, but uh, my teeth ain't looking so good. I ever tell you all about the time I got my name? So this one time, a long time ago, I'm enjoying myself, you know, out in the combat zone. A few bets, a few drinks, a whole lot of jokes. I'm making friends, having a good time. Now this one guy, he gets jealous. I mean, I can't blame him, it happens to me all the time. People just get upset that they ain't as cool. Anyway, he's this really big guy, I mean huge guy actually. Uh, I don't remember his name, doesn't matter, shut up. So this big idiot decides he's going to challenge me to a drinking contest. Guess he figures he'll make me look like a fool in front of all the nice folks in the combat zone. So he lumbers up to me, comes up to my table, tells me he can drink me under the table. I'm like, the hell you can, try me! So everybody gathers round because it's clear this is going to be the coolest thing that happens all night. 
and we just go at it. Just shot after shot after shot. Now, the whole time, he's talking shit about me. I mean, telling me I'm going to lose, telling me that I'm a piece of shit, you know, all this stuff, and I'm just laughing. I'm laughing, I'm taking my shots. Now, I'm so drunk, and I mean so drunk, that it's crazy. Later on, people were like, man, you were so amazing. I didn't even know how you could still be standing. I've never seen anyone drink that much. And after a while, you know, I see that big guy starting to get wobbly, right? Like he's, he's not going to last much longer. But you know, I take a minute to make sure that I'm not so drunk that I'm just seeing shit. But I'm right. It's him. He is wobbly. So, you know, I push through it, man. I knuckle down and I keep taking shots. Finally, he just goes face first into the table. Out cold. No question. And I'm so pumped up, I pick this guy up. I shit you not, I picked him right up, totally raged out, and then I just, bam, slam him back down onto the floor. And I'm screaming, yeah, man, yeah, who's the best, who's the best? And this one guy he comes over, he looks at me, and he's like, oh, man, you blew all the blood vessels in your eye, man. That's totally messed up. That's so cool. And then everyone cheers even more, and I was so pumped up, I didn't even feel it. And everyone's all like, yeah, let's hear it for Red. It was pretty great. You should have been there. You're all a bunch of psychopaths, and I love you for it. This is Raider Radio, and it's for you. A quick note, whoever stole my whiskey bottle, joke's on you. That ain't whiskey. You go right ahead and keep it. This one ain't about me. It's about this friend that I have, who is not me. First time I ever seen you was down at the beach by the beer. Through a thick black haze of fire and smoke, things suddenly seemed so clear. I knew I had to have you, make you mine at any cost. I gave up on my old crew. Never worried about what I lost I gave you gold, I gave you caps Gave you all I stole and more Never counted on you, stealing from me Running out the door Baby, quit raiding my heart I need you here You took all I had and left me I can't stand being apart this ain't no way to try and test me I know you remember all the fun we had Playing the odds at Easy City And when we roasted that caravan down in the fence I was so happy to have you with me But after a while I couldn't keep denying What I daily witnessed the caps, the guns, the blood so ground Well, I just couldn't hold your interest Now I don't buy what they tell me That you can't ever be satisfied I'll kill every last man in the whole wide world Just to have you by my side Baby, quit raiding my heart I need you here You took all I had and left me I can't stand Apart. Baby, quit raiding my heart I need you here Bring back the love you stole I can't stand being apart I need you here to make me whole uh, I ain't gonna lie to you all Love hurts. It really does. I mean, that's what my friend said when he told me the story, and then I went and wrote a song about it. Whatever. General announcement. I don't know where this rumor started that my name is Russell, but, well, it's Red Eye, okay? Just Red Eye. Forget this Russell shit. So I was thinking about the time I came to Nuka World. I ever tell you deadbeats that story? Doesn't matter. I feel like telling it now. Shut up. So, like a year ago, I'm running with this gang, 
pretty good deal. I mean, I probably could have been in charge, you know, but whatever. I don't need that kind of hassle, right? I mean, I'm totally capable of running my own gang. Probably the best freaking gang you've ever seen. But anyway, I hear this dude, Coulter, is putting together a huge-ass team of raiders to take over Nuka World. And I hear this, and I just gotta go check it out. You know, see if it's the real deal. Now, the guys I'm running with, they're all upset that I'm leaving. They're so upset, they just keep saying, Oh, come on, man. You have to stay. You're the best out of all of us. We're screwed without you. But I'm like, no, man. I ain't gonna let you guys hold me back. So I go out on my own. I travel through some crazy shit you wouldn't believe even if I told you about it. And I wind up here. Now, I find out who Coulter is, and I just march right up to his face and say, Well, here I am. Now what? You can see right away that he was impressed. So he looks at me and he says, Man, you look like hell. How long has it been since you slept? And I say, Well, I don't know, man. Doesn't matter. I can sleep when I'm dead. And you can see on his face that he was totally impressed. Just like he knew I was the real deal. So first he says, man, I am impressed. You're the real deal, Red Eye. I'm gonna call you that because your eyes are bloodshot as hell and it looks really cool. He says, you're gonna be my right hand man because I can tell just by looking at you that I can count on you. But then, like, he stops and he sees the guitar I'm carrying and he says, oh, no shit, you can play? And I look at him and I say, I don't know, man, can I? Yeah, Coulter, like you said, I am the real deal. And he loses his mind, you know, he's so excited. He says, oh, no way, I got an even more important job for you. Get your ass into that radio station and make it amazing. Well, and here we are. Swear to you, true story, all of it, every word. Of course, Coulter ended up being kind of a chump, but I mean, you know, I knew that from the beginning. Like, I probably could have challenged him right there. You know, made myself the overboss, but, you know, whatever. I like this gig just fine. Yeah. This here is Raider Radio. Don't forget, if you've got something you want everyone to hear, you're probably wrong, and whatever it is sucks. But if you insist, drop us a note and we'll read it on air. Hey, let's get personal for a second here, assholes. Whoever dropped a frag down my favorite toilet, if I find you, you are going to die. Slowly and painfully. Here's a little something which I know you've all heard pieces of before, only this time you've got Red Eye, the master of storytelling, to lay it on you. Now this here is a true story. And I know it's a true story, because I heard like 10 different versions from 10 different guys, all of them swearing it's true. And when you get a story like that, well, you just know there's got to be some truth to it. But the way this story starts is a mystery. Nobody knows where the legendary raider named Atlas came from. Some say he was in the Great War, got hit right smack in the face with one of them big nukes, shrugged it off, and kept on going. Some say he just appeared out of thin air, like the wastes themselves conjuring him up. And some say he was the product of a night of unholy passion between a super mutant, a death claw, and Satan himself. Now most of you all know the later stories, how Atlas single-handedly took down that band of super mutants south of Boston. I heard he bit the head off the leader's dog. The head clean off. Or that time he took a group of five men, only five, downtown straight to a rival gang's territory and walked out with their leader's son just because the kid said some mean things about Atlas's mother. But the biggest story was that spot way north of Boston. Uh, what, what the hell was the name of it again? Doesn't matter, I, I guess because it ain't there no more. Uh, Andover. Andover, I think that was it. Somewhere up there. Anyway, 
This little shithole of a town was home to the Junkers, a gang that by most rights never should have lasted more than, like, a week. I don't know how they made it, but they survived. They got by, and somehow they got noticed. In particular, Atlas noticed the gang leader's woman, a blonde number named Hope. Atlas, they say, was smitten in love from the moment he laid eyes on her. Hope, though, well, she didn't feel the same. I have a note here, folks, about a missing person, and I'm not gonna bother reading it. Come on, you all know that missing means dead. It's Red Eye here, running Raider Radio. You love it, and you know it. So, I told you about Atlas, the meanest raider to ever wander this world. And how he fell for Hope, a beautiful raider from a rival gang that didn't give two shits about him. Now, like I said, Atlas, he was used to getting his way. So he gathered up a big old army of raiders, marched right up to the town where Hope's gang, the Junkers, was all holed up, and demanded she come out and talk to him. Hope, headstrong as she was, very politely yelled over the wall and told Atlas exactly where he could shove his intentions. I hear she launched that golden Brahmin right back over the wall at him too. Atlas, as you might imagine, didn't take too kindly to being disrespected, but in his own special crazy-ass way, he found himself wanting hope even more. He was in a bind now, you see. He couldn't let her insults stand, but he wasn't ready to just up and storm the town and risk killing hope in the process. In my opinion, folks, ain't no relationship worth this kind of trouble. I'm just being honest with you. Anyway, so Atlas calls out a few of his lieutenants, talks to them all quiet for a few minutes. Then, these poor saps march right out in front of the wall surrounding the town, and I swear to you, they set themselves on fire right then and there. Over the screaming, Atlas yells that if he can convince these good men to set fire to themselves, imagine what he can convince the other couple hundred men to do to their town. Personally, I'd find that a pretty convincing argument. But Hope, she ain't backing down. She yells that Atlas can set himself on fire. That'd get him about as far as anything. Now I tell you, when Atlas hears this, he gets angry beyond all reason. And he slams those giant fists down on the ground. As the story goes, windows shattered in Diamond City. And a whole section of Lexington comes crashing down just from the shock of it. Hope and her gang wake up the next morning and find their town the only thing still standing as far as the eye can see. Atlas says it's the last threat he's going to make before he storms their gates. And honestly, between us, this whole thing has already gone way off the rails. Now Hope, she's a good woman, a raider through and through. But she takes care of her own. She knows there ain't no way her little gang can stand up to Atlas and his army. And so she knows what she's got to do. The white flag goes up, and Hope herself walks right out the front gate. Says if Atlas gives his word that her gang is safe, she'll go free. Only, he's got a shake on it. Atlas, proud man that he is, takes her up on that offer. And it's not until he's shaking her hand that he hears the beeping. Clever woman that she was, Hope went and strapped herself up with more than a couple of mini nukes. <laughs> she knew what she was about. Now, I am told that on that day, the sun might as well not even have come up. For all the good it did next to the brightness of that explosion, men hundreds of miles away went blind. Birds dropped out of the sky for days after. And for as big and as tough as he was, they ain't never found all of Atlas. Like I said at the top, true story. All of it. Is there a moral in all of this? Hell if I know. You all ever feel like you just can't get enough? Well, Red Eye hears you, man. He knows what it's like. Well, I've been told it's in our blood, under our skin and all that mud. Does it matter if I'm buried in stuff? I just can't ever get enough. 
need one last score I could be sitting on a throne in caps and still need one last score It ain't about the hall, could just be scraps Well I've seen guys lose their mind Just trying to hold onto too much trash They're convinced it's gold But I can help them out by lighting in their stash just by being a good neighbor and pulling in that cash I need one last score I can clean, clear out a whole damn town and still need one last score Take anything that ain't nailed down I need one last score I could be sitting on a throne in caps and still need one last score It ain't about the hall, could just be scraps I need one last score They that'll make this go away Just one last score I could be sitting on a Rolling caps and still need one last score It ain't about the hall, could just be scraps I need one last score Maybe that'll make this go away Just one more score And I can 